Greetings, everyone, and welcome to episode 59 of Teaching Tales, the podcast totally devoted to sharing stories from the world of education. Once again, I'm your host, Brent Coley, educator in Southern California, currently a principal at Alta Marietta Elementary. And joining me today, excited to talk creativity with Albert Thomas. Albert, how are you, man? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to jump into creativity with you. Yeah, awesome. So we we virtually met. <laughs> You're in Texas, correct? That is correct. All right. We virtually met uh, one or two weekends ago doing a, an EduMatch tweet and talk. And uh, we've connected and, and the, the calendars have aligned. So before we start chatting, let's let uh, anyone who's listening know who is Albert Thomas? Oh, great question. And so I am slowly trying to figure that out myself. And so, but um, yeah, I am currently a um, program coordinator for EdTech team. And so in a um, in my previous experience in education, I have been a digital learning consultant. I've been a uh, principal. And so and I've worked with all grade levels from K through 12. So um, I really have enjoyed my time in education um being able to dive in and um just kind of working with students and teachers and so uh yeah really and really enjoying um the opportunities i've been given to be able to work in education um i love creativity one of the big things if um i've been around um you for any length of time you'll hear me talk about photography videography um, any way that you can use creativity in the classroom. So I do do some, um, quite a few things I'm sure we'll dive into when it comes to creating um, videos, um, graphics, and, and just kind of using those in education, those those tools and tips in, inside of education. So that's that's awesome. That's, that's I'm, I'm excited to chat about what, uh, was, I was on your website earlier today and and just kind of seeing the stuff that you do, and I was like, "Oh, this is going to be this is going to be good stuff." So let's let's jump right in. I mean, when when we hear, I mean, creativity is <clears throat> I don't want to call it a buzzword, but that's a very popular word in in education today, rightfully so. Yeah. I mean, this is something that we need to be doing more uh, with students. So share share a story or or two if you if you could, just kind of about how how we can do that. Yeah, I think um, it, it definitely is a buzzword. Uh, I, I'll just I'll say there's there's definitely a lot of people that have kind of gravitated to creativity. Um, I do think that's been a good thing, and I think that's also been a struggle in some in some regards. Um, I do definitely believe that everyone has the opportunity to be creative or use creativity. Um, I also think that um, I caution people to be so hard core in and starting to negate those that actually enter into a creative field. So it's one of those things that for me, it's, it's been definitely a balance um, of just kind of deal, dealing with those two aspects of the movement of using creativity in the classroom. Um, but yeah, I've had some great opportunities to work with um, using creativity. Um, one of the things that um, I think creativity allows you to do is to be able to approach situations in a different way um, and really think beyond what you see and see how maybe those puzzles can come together. Um, so one of the things that I think is um, that I've been able to do is spend some time kind of developing conversations around um, how can we create um, opportunities for students to be creative and just kind of um, approach situations and, and think outside the box and beyond what they, they may traditionally be um, experiencing. So, um, one of the things that we did on our uh, on my campus as an administrator is we we tried to make sure that we had um, situations where students were given a voice um, and if they noticed something that they had an opportunity to be able to find a solution to it so we tried to cultivate this culture where a student had um, noticed an issue or noticed a problem and they didn't just come with a hey this is a problem we need to fix this or you need to fix it but they they came with a solution. They they would see something, and then all of a sudden they would take it from a different approach. So one of the things that we we noticed is that we wanted to make sure that our campus had um, the ability to be taken care of. We wanted to take ownership of our campus. We wanted to um, not trash our campus, 
And so one of the things that we had students that wanted um, that saw opportunities to either decorate uh, trash cans or to be able to do uh, murals and put them and, and do creative projects that really um, was an opportunity for them to showcase their creativity and their skills um, in that area. But it really was something, I think, beyond just the creative skills that were able to be shared in those settings. But it was really about the students looking at a need and instead of wondering, hey, if I just bring this to attention, someone's going to get off um, get off their bottom and go out and do something. But no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually get out. And I'm going to start doing this. And it just, we saw other students who were probably who would probably stay in their shell and not really come out and communicate we saw them start to um, jump in and help and 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 also look at ways that they can they could creatively solve problems on the campus and it, it really was it really was great to see that kind of evolve over time so that's awesome I, as you're saying that I'm, I'm the word empowering you you, you empowered students to because I mean, you've been an administrator. I'm an administrator. It's there are things that need to be fixed, constantly tweaked. But there's, it is so great when someone notices something that hey, you know what? Maybe we could work on this or tweak this a little bit. And when he or she comes with a solution, rather than just a complaint, yeah. <laughs> like like you said, it's like hey, this isn't working. Fix it. And it's like. We're here. It's a, we're always want to take that feedback, but it's so much nicer when someone says, "Hey, I noticed this, and I and I also notice a potential. What do you think about if we did X, Y, or Z to help potentially fix? Or and may, fix may not be the right word, but move in a more positive direction. So, I mean, I love that. I love the idea about the trash cans. Yeah, I, I think student. I mean, it's it's just amazing how. I, 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 I just, I, I know that I've had a number of people in my life that have really have helped me to understand that this idea that you have to wait till somehow you've gotten enough education or you've got enough, um, you, you've had enough opportunities to grow um, that you can step out and start to impact the world. I, I just, I, I don't buy into that because of the fact that I think that there is just, there's so much opportunity for us to impact. And if we would just have an eye to be able to see those things and then be the person who takes action, um, there, there's just so much opportunity that's available. And I, and I think that the more we can look at ways that we can empower students to be able to um, see those problems and then we get out of the way with all of our, um, our thoughts, our biases on their age or whatever, whatever the case may be, their backgrounds, um, but allow them to be able to to be able to go out and to be able to be empowered, to be um, encouraged to to make those changes that they see. Um, I, I just I've had enough time in education to know that there's some incredible we have some incredible students, and um, sometimes it's 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 about just creating those opportunities for them to be able to express themselves and express. Um, the solutions that they have and they bring to the table. Yeah, making it safe for them to to feel comfortable uh, to do that. I'm, I'm thinking a couple of years ago, I had uh, a couple fifth graders. Some they were ending fourth grade in actually maybe it was last year, um, and they came they came to to administration at our site, and, and they they were concerned about um, bullying. And, and just not so much bully, but just kids being nice. I mean, oftentimes the word bully, bullying is thrown out a lot um, when kids, I mean, there's, believe me, there's a huge bullying problem, but often, oftentimes kids say something unkind and <laughs> it's labeled bullying and things like that. But, but these kids, they wanted to start a club, like, a, like an anti-bullying, a, a be nice club. Mm -hmm. And they came to me saying, hey, Mr. Coley, we would like to do this. And they had like a whole like proposal ready to go. It was awesome. And, and, and they, were, they were asking permission to do it. And they just wanted to do like once a week in the morning before on Fridays, before our Friday flag. And anybody who wants to come will, will make posters and, and just try to create a, a positive culture on campus. And I was like, uh, yes, please. I mean, it, it was fantastic. But we have to make sure that there's something where the kids would feel like you said, it doesn't matter about your title. 
<laughs> it doesn't matter if you're nine years old or 39 years old and if you're a principal or a teacher or a fourth grader mm -hmm. i mean we all have we all have ideas that 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 should could and should be brought to the table yeah and, uh, and that that community aspect is huge um i think that being able to create those um definitely creating that environment where everyone feels comfortable being able to um talk through um, what the issues are and then to be able to find those solutions and to understand that those solutions can come in a myriad of ways. Those, those solutions can, and honestly, they can stem from a bad idea. And mm -hmm. so sometimes there's, and, that, and that's the great thing about creativity. Uh, it, it really is, it, it really is this process of, of like diving in and just, and just trying things and trying to figure out what's going to work best. Um, I know for me, it's it's always been great to be able to just kind of get that task of um, even before I got into education of just being able to say, hey, I'm going to I need to create this, do this creative project. I need to create something and to be able to dive into the process of just trying to figure it out, how to take this vision that someone else has and then be able to build it into something that is hits the mark on what they're looking for and also allows for them to to move forward whatever project that they're doing. Um, so I just think that's, that's just, just an important process to just, just to keep in mind that you give students those opportunities, you allow them to jump in and start to do things that where they're trying to solve problems and they're trying to find um, these creative solutions to the things that they're, that, that are problems truly in their lives. Um, they're thinking through the process and they're working through and when they come to you and, they, and they, they've spent hours thinking through certain solutions and um, you give them certain things that allow for them to think about it in a different way um, and you send them back and have them refine their ideas, that constant refining is such an important pro part of the creative process and the creative problem solving. And it's a skill set that those students can take well beyond the classroom. Oh, yeah. They can use that in so many different ways. They can use it. Um, if they are if if they end up um, in a variety of career paths, they can use those skill sets to be able to move things forward. And you've given them the, those opportunities to explore those skills in a safe environment, in an environment where you can provide guidance. And I think that's something in education we have to take um, we have to take serious because that is such. Um, it, it's an incubation time. It's that, that opportunity for you to really help cultivate those skill sets, those those abilities for them to think through problems um, and, and them not have to have what my dad used to always say, you don't have any bills in your name right now. So <laughs> so there, there's there's still a little grace that's there for you. And I think that that's something that that's just important for us to do as educators. Yeah, you, you again. You mentioned you mentioned that I, I had said earlier, and you just mentioned it again. Being safe, as I was thinking about what our, our chat tonight, I was thinking back to, and what you just touched on, I think segues into it nicely. When I was uh, getting my master's degree, I remember taking uh, one of my classes, one of the very first classes in the program, and the professor gave us an assignment where we had to. I, I don't even remember exactly what we had to write about. But she basically said, you need to write about this. And we, we meaning the students, were asking, okay, okay, so uh, how long does it have to be? And she wouldn't answer us. And we were like, I mean, she was just like, well, just, just until you're done. And <laughs> the disequilibrium in that classroom of adults of <laughs> mid to late 20s and 30s somethings of kids kids adults who mm -hmm. were given an assignment but they were not we were not given parameters and i shared i mean truly and and people kept asking no 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 seriously like like if i want to get an a how long does it have to be and the professor refused to give us a number she refused to say it has to be five pages has yeah. to be 10 pages she did not do that the reason I share that story is in that context, 
And that, I mean, that, that can segue into an entire different discussion on grading and <laughs> things like mm-hmm. that. But, but we, it wasn't safe for us because I, in hindsight, I see what she was doing. She was wanting to give us that creativity, but it was still in the confines of, but I have to get the grade type mm-hmm. thing. So it's something like, how do we get to the point where, again, I see the point. It's like she, she did not want to confine us. She did not want to give us a box that was dimensions this by this and say, you must stay within this box when you write this paper. At the same time, there was nothing. <laughs> and because of the traditional uh, con- confines of the educational system as we know it in terms of you need 90% for an A and 80% mm-hmm. for B, you had a room full of students who were trying to play the game and get the grade so they could get their degree. And again, I think that's it's like we don't want that. We don't want our students to play the game to yeah. get a to get the, the grade, to get the degree, we want them to learn. And unfortunately, in that class, in my experience, it was about the grade. It wasn't about the, I mean, it was ironic because she was trying to do this, but it it wasn't working because there was still, there was no safety there. Yeah. And, and how, how do you think we can do that? Like for anyone listening who is a classroom teacher, for example, and is wanting to foster that, or if, or if you've seen this happen, how do, how do we make it? How do we give them opportunities to be creative, yet at the same time, make it safe, I think you'd said earlier, to fail? Yeah, I think that's a, um, I mean, that's that's definitely a, a big question. And I, and I, several things come to mind, came to mind as you were talking. Um, first of all, I would say how many, as, as an adult um, who is, um, who's a, an administrator, how many times have you been given a box to like everything has to fit into this? There's a lot of times you've run into situations where you've had to think um, creatively. You've had to think outside of the box or think outside of the norms to solve situations for real life problems with families um, that you're trying to help and you're trying to move students forward in their education. So I think we we all identify that those are skills or those are that, those are important traits to have as we move forward. Um, I'll say, and this is me as uh, speaking as an administrator, um, I think it starts with us. I mean, I think it, it's one being able to set those those standards and be very clear that we're going to look, we're going to, we're going to change some of the things that we're doing. We're going to, we're going to look at ways that am I holding everyone's foot to the fire because I need to have a certain, I need everyone to have a certain amount of grades in their grade books so that I can mark it off my list <clears throat> and say, everyone's met this quota. Or am I really looking at how are we creatively providing opportunities for students to be able to grow and to show that they have um, the knowledge that we're trying to get them to, to absorb. And, and I think that that's something that, it, it causes administrators to really have to take a hard look at the things that they're doing. And I, I 100% acknowledge as administrators that there are certain things that we we have to do just because we're in a role that those things are mandated for us as there well. There are boxes that we must yeah. play in sometimes. But I do think it's it's looking at the opportunities for you to be able to, where you can create that margin for those type of activities to be creative. And so sometimes that means that you may be able to lessen the amount of grades that, that are at that are being asked to be fulfilled, then maybe it's looking at opportunities where you can allow students to explore things that they're passionate about to be able to creatively approach. I take it back to one of my favorite stories. Um, I had an English teacher of my, um, and we were reading the uh, Beowulf. Um, and I, I love adventure stories, but uh, for some reason that just, that one wasn't resonating with me. And I remember we all had to write papers um, we read the book, write a book report. So, and I remember going and talking to my teacher and I don't remember why I asked, but I asked, is there something I can do different? There we go. And what ended up happening is she said, what do you want to do? Mm. And it was so empowering. Like you, like you mentioned earlier, it was one of those moments where I kind of froze. Like I was like, I thought you were just going to shut me down the minute I said it. Mm. I didn't expect you to give throw it back at me that way. And I remember um, I said, I'd love to illustrate it. I love drawing. I love um, 
just kind of doodling and doing those things. And, and I remember to this day because it was empowering. It was encouraging. It, it acknowledged something in me that she was allowing me to express. She was giving me an opportunity. And, and I remember taking so much ownership on that because she trusted me. And so I think that that's a big part to keep in mind that that trust factor across the board. Um, and so I spent more, I, I joke, I spent more hours in that story than probably anyone else in the class who were writing book reports because I wanted to honor the fact that she gave me the opportunity. But then I also wanted to make sure that I had something that really represented um, the story and that was really something that she saw of value. So I was able to il illustrate several elements of uh, the story and it's something that I was able to give to her. And, and she, um, she kept for, um, I remember coming back to that campus and, um, and seeing her and I, and I remember that she had kept those as part of the things that she had had. But it was one of those things where she was willing to allow for those things to happen. Um, and yeah, it, it, I 100 percent acknowledge that that means it may be more work on certain ends. You, there may be there'll need to be rubrics that are developed. There'll need to be clear standards that are set. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's simply just giving students the opportunity to be able to show what they know in whatever way they they want to. Yes. It doesn't have, and, and that's not, and I, and I always tell people, that's not me telling you never to do a book report. What that's telling me is that to acknowledge the fact that you have students that have different ways that they they learn and they like to share their knowledge. So look for ways for the, that you can give them um, ways to share. You may think that it's um, like, hey, I'm going to be doing this book report, but what could I do? Could I use something like Adobe Spark and allow for them to be able to create a, a Spark movie? Is there... Um, are there other tools that I can use? Can I use Wii Video? Can I use um, all of these great tools that are out there that you could have students share what they know? Um, I love, um, Pat Green has a book, um, Patrick Green. Um, he has a book that um, is 50 Ways to Use YouTube in the Classroom. Mm -hmm. um, great book. And one of the things he has in there is the YouTube genre mashup. It's a, it's a fun, but it's, and it seems like it's silly. But it is one of those things where you have, you take a content, you take whatever topic you're studying and you have students take it and explain that information using a genre in YouTube. So an unboxing video, um, a bad dead video. Students are already naturally, these are things that they're already jumping in and using. YouTube is a staple. Um, I remember all the statistics where they're talking about the, the generations that are coming up after my generation they're using video, they're, they're engaging with their videos in YouTube's format more than they are in a TV um, or on a TV in a traditional sense. So it's one of those things where that activity allows for students to take a concept that you may be talking about, um, like an atom and do an exercise video using the, uh, a genre like exercise video. So how could you create it? And one of the ways I, I've done that in, in sessions and when I've talked to people is like, look, um, I'm not going to tell you what tool to use. You can use anything you want to create your video, but you have to create something. And those th sometimes where you, and, and we have to keep in mind that, yeah, we want to give kids, we want to give our students this freedom, but we also need to make sure that we give them the reins to be able to, um, to kind of rein in that creativity so it can be focused because those constraints can really be empowering as well and allow students to really focus that energy um, when they're creating. So, um, I mean, th there's just so many incredible things that are out there that allow for you to be able to, um, to use creativity. Um, I mentioned on the, um, on our last one, we, um, we were on the EduMatch um, together, um, the Adobe Education Exchange. There are tons and tons of free resources that are available um, that educators um, from higher ed to K through 12 that are actually, they're putting resources on there. They're putting entire lesson plans. They're, they're putting things on the Adobe Education Exchange that are high quality resources. There are um, different courses that Adobe's put together themselves that really help you dive into using how can I bring in creativity in very specific ways that, that 
it would be great to just kind of spend some time. I would encourage everyone just to spend some time going through and just exploring a lot of those things that are available. Um, just a shameless plug. I, I, I'm a firm believer. Um, I said shameless plug. I mean, a, a shameless, um, let me just throw this out there. Yeah. I am a firm believer that you have to date around when it comes to using tools. Um, so I, I highly encourage people don't get so caught up into using this one tool, but find all the tools that could be available and just get, put them out there. Allow your students to explore these tools and just give you feedback on how well they would be um, in using. Don't feel like you have to be the one that has to go out and figure out all the things that are available out there and then somehow distill them down for your students to use. Your students are a great resource. They're a great asset. And we need to make sure that we're leveraging those in the classroom as well. So hopefully that answers your question. Oh, a absolutely. And I jotted down the one, qu your, your story about your English teacher. Yep. That, that, that is that is one of the most powerful ones I've heard in a while. And I jotted her question. Is it, was it a she? Yeah, it, it was. Her question to you, what do you want to do? And for any, for any teacher listening to this right now, or administrator, I mean, really, what a powerful question that is, is this was the assignment. You came and said, could I do something else? She said, what do you want to do? Yeah. And, and put, put the ball back in your court, and I jotted down – to play into your strengths. You said, well, illustration. I'm, I'm, I'm good at this. I'm passionate about this. And look what happened. Like you yeah. said, you probably spent more time on that project than any other student in the class because she trusted you. She gave you the freedom. She still gave you, I'm sure, some parameters mm -hmm. because, again, like my college class and the master's, there were no parameters and it was terrifying. And, and that's like, the, go run around the field. There's no fences. Well, someone's going to get lost but you were able to play to your strengths and how many kids out there. And I also, I love how you said, I'm not saying never write a book report. I'm not, I mean, it, but, but in some, but not always writing a book report and think about those kids out there who, like you said, they're into video. Now, not just into video, they're good at making videos mm -hmm. or writing poetry or rapping or anything like I mean, I was thinking Hamilton, the the the, the musical Hamilton. Think think about what that has. My daughter is eighteen years old. My wife and her, fortunately, were fortunate they got to see Hamilton. And my daughter knows everything about that portion of U.S. history now, mm -hmm. <laughs> because that was taking something. I mean, write a write a report on Hamilton, or but look at the format that. Uh, one, what was it? One Lynn, Lynn one mill. I'm kidding. Lynn, Lynn well. <laughs> uh, I mean, he put it in a format that is resonating with, with millions of people. What if we gave our kids the opportunity to do that? And I can't remember. I'm drawing a blank. I saw this on Facebook or Twitter a few days ago or a week or so ago. Uh, a friend of mine had posted a, a picture of a student rapping she had written a rap to something that she had learned. Now I can, I mean, I was never mandated to write a rap growing up, but obviously she had a teacher who gave her the freedom who probably said, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. And she probably said, I want to rap. And the teacher said, okay. Yeah. And she did. And yeah. probably spent more time on more time putting that together than she would have, like you said it, you took ownership of that and you really wanted it to be good yeah. because she trusted you. Maybe. And uh, and I'll just I'll just say this because it's it's the elephant in the room. Uh, um, I 100% acknowledge that in those certain circumstances that you're going to have a student fail in that. They're going to fail. And it's it's about the reaction that we have in those settings. Yeah. Those those opportunities and there's so much I've learned when I when I look into when I study business and things along those lines where in business you're trying to get to your first failure as quickly as possible so that you can learn from it. Mm. And oftentimes in education we have those uh, are in when we're learning we we fail and then that's well then you're automatically going into this this other realm of of what we're going to do to help you. But it's one of those things where we we oftentimes just don't 
just give the students space to deal with that failure to move forward. Give them certain things that they that can provide them guidance to get up and move and try something different. That student comes and brings a rap and it bombs. Yeah. It's funny when you when you go, hey, I want you to go find me five rappers and tell me their story, how they got started. Mm. And then for them to get a clearer perspective of the amount of times that they failed and how many times they had to adjust and how many times that they they were booed off stage. It's it's so funny. Um, it, it's just there's so many opportunities as as educators. And that's one of the reasons I love education is because you get to have these conversations with kids. You get to have these conversations with uh, with them and to be able to help them grow. And these are conversations they lean on because I know in my own life, I can lean back on those experiences. I can lean back on um, coaches that I had that said, you are lazy and I see way more in you than you see in yourself. And knowing what that did to light a fire in me when I was a sophomore in high school and how that changed the whole tra trajectory of my life mm. because of those conversations that were able to be had, even when I was failing at something that I wanted to be successful at. So I think that we definitely have to make sure that we're looking for those opportunities that just help students to improve the things that they're wanting to do. All, um, giving them the opportunities, not being afraid to let them try something, but also being aware of your students and knowing your students, building those relationships so you can engage them in conversations when they don't see those same skill sets, they don't see those abilities in themselves yet and helping to draw those out. I think those are, I mean, those are just important things to keep in mind that just what, what I would say is there is so much empowerment in being a teacher, being an administrator. Um, there's so much incredible opportunity that we have to impact lives, to impact generations, to impact families. And, and I think it's one of those things that um, I love to, I love seeing when students get it. And I think that there's a lot of people that would say that, that those moments when they get it, but there are so many other moments that we never get to see. We might like that teacher who did that, had that, that I, that had the opportunity, gave me an opportunity to do the illustrations in Beowulf doesn't know how many times I, I leaned back on that lesson to make decisions in my life. And those are the things where I think that if we can keep cultivating those skills and just trusting that they're going to take root at some point, um, I think that there's just, there, there's a lot of opportunities for us to impact um students and impact their families and just the things that they would do in the future so um but I'll, I'll get off of my soapbox no that, that's you're, you're absolutely right and uh <clears throat> we plant seeds that we will not always see the fruit that is that is born from the branches that will grow from those seeds and and i think i'll just put put one thing into close when you said like when they when they fail failure shouldn't be a four letter word and i and when you said that it's like we don't slap a grade again coming back to the whole grading thing mm -hmm. too often historically it's one and done you're up up you failed you get an f or you get a c minus or you get a whatever like you said going to the back wrap hey if it wasn't great the first time give them the opportunity to refine it and not penalizing students for not getting it the first time. Yeah. Mastery is the goal, not perfection the first time. Mastery is the goal. And if that goal takes one, two, three, four, and beyond times, if the students know they have that opportunity, it, it just everyone is gonna everyone is gonna be better off. <laughs> so yeah. and, I, and I'll just to tag onto that as well, it's the same for administrators dealing with teachers mm -hmm. is to just to understand that as, a, as your teachers are taking the risk to try a new lesson and a, 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 something new, um, maybe a new um, tool or a new strategy, or they're, they're doing something new. Uh, that is such a tender time as an administrator that we can come in and help support we can yeah. encourage, we can provide that space for them to grow. Um, so I would just encourage that we can, that, that as administrators, that we can all help 
um, to remove the the fear of trying something new. Yeah. Um, because what's what could happen? Um, but yeah, um, I, I think this is these are these are conversations that I could talk on for uh, for hours about because I, I think they're they're important. So I, I, I hear you, and and I'll just echo that that as an administrator, making it safe for teachers to try something new. I've often said, I would rather come in and see you trying something new that's not going well than seeing a quiet classroom where there's no learning going on <laughs> or, 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 the, or the engagement level is really low. And I think f when they try something new, we need to celebrate that. And I've written about this. When they try something new and it fails, we almost need to celebrate that even more yeah. and celebrate. Yes, you tried it. And it, and it may have been a, a, a total this time. It may have bombed mm -hmm. this time, but look, but did you see the engagement of your kids? Oh my gosh, they were glued and they don't care if you bombed it. Yeah. They tried, they're going to go home and brag about you to mom or dad because they weren't in a box today. Mm -hmm. You were, you were standing on the desk or you were doing whatever it was. They weren't, weren't on a box. So, yeah, making it safe, not just for students, but for teachers as well. Yeah. That is ab absolutely critical. Well, Albert, this this is <laughs> this was a great conversation. Like you said, I, I could right, I right. could chat with you for hours and hours and hours as well. But uh, but listeners probably have arrived to work right now if they're if they're driving in their cars. So we're going to let them go. But before we do that, for anyone who who you have hooked and, and they want to connect with you more. How, how can they find you online? Yeah. So a couple of different places. I typically, I mean, I'm edgy copilot and just about every space. So Twitter, Instagram, um, my website is edgycopilot.com. You can also check out my YouTube channel where I, um, I'm mindfully trying to build out some, um, some different videos that highlight, um, just great things that educators are doing. Um, so definitely go check out some of those those videos. There'll be more that'll be coming this year. Um, and so those would be some great places. So I'd love to connect with you. And so, um, and then, like I said, reach out if you have questions or in, definitely check out some of the things that we, we've kind of discussed today. Awesome. Awesome. Well, as soon as we're done here, I'm going to go subscribe to that video to your to your YouTube channel because uh, awesome. I, I would love to I would love to continue this conversation through the video and stuff like that. And uh, Albert, thanks for taking the time, man. Totally, totally appreciate it. And uh, for anyone listening, thank you so much for listening. Appreciate you. If you haven't already done so, remember to subscribe. And if you like what you hear, as I say at the end of each episode, drop a review, not just a, li a like, but a little comment, something like that. It's not about ego, but it does help more listeners find the podcast. And that's the goal of this is to reach and hopefully encourage as many people as possible. So thank you for listening. Uh, Albert, thank you for taking the time. And for everyone else, thank you. And until next time, have a good one.